Hello and welcome to Perspectives on PH. I'm Steve Highsmith. PAH-TV brings you up-to-date coverage of the latest news and information on pulmonary hypertension research and clinical practice. We recently sat down and spoke with Dr. Valerie McLaughlin from the University of Michigan for her perspective on the results of the Serafin trial just published in the New England Journal of Medicine. We asked Dr. McLaughlin a series of questions about how this data may impact practice for physicians who treat patients with PAH. First, she described what she considers the critical takeaways from the Serafin study. I think the Serafin study is a landmark study for several reasons. It is really the first morbidity and mortality trial that has ever been done in pulmonary hypertension. It's, it's progressing our disease state further. All of our other trials up until this time have been short-term six-minute hall walk trials. And we've made impacts on patients' lives and we now need to answer longer-term questions. The mean duration of follow-up in the Serafin trial was 2.2 years, much longer than anything we've had before. So I think one of the important messages of Serafin is that it takes us into the next stage of clinical trials in pulmonary hypertension and that it is possible to do such trials in even this orphan disease state. So just moving us in that direction is one key point. I think the second key point is that the Serafin study has shown that we can demonstrate improvements in long-term outcomes in this disease. It's a novel primary endpoint, the morbidity and mortality type endpoint. And I think the components of that endpoint are issues that are really critical to patients. And so we can show patients that over a longer term, over two years, we can affect things that really impact their life, like hospitalizations or progression of PAH. We then asked Dr. McLaughlin how the study results impact her view on how treatment may change for patients. Steve, I think the whole concept of a longer term morbidity and mortality study is very impactful for patients. The patients come to us wanting to feel better and that's important, but they also read on the internet that they only have two years to live and, and they are very frightful of what can happen over the course of time. We now have longer term data for them. We have clinical trial data uh, with a longer duration of follow up and we can demonstrate to them that we are impacting the course of their disease with our therapies for PAH, not just changing six minute hall walk over a short per term period of time. We then discuss morbidity and mortality and what the data will mean to clinicians and patients. Steve, I think that the world of pH is advancing in terms of clinical trial design. The cardiologists who are used to dealing with things like heart failure are used to the concept of morbidity and mortality. And this is a concept that I think the rest of the community and the patients will embrace. It really suggests that we're changing the course of the disease, that we're impacting things that are important to to the patient's life. We're reducing the progression of their PAH, we're reducing hospitalizations. So I think that as we think about treating patients over a longer term, as patients start to do better with the many therapies that we have, we need to move into a longer term outcome as opposed to a short term six minute hall walk. Dr. McLaughlin talked about which patients are appropriate for treatment. Steve, I think the specific treatment for an individual patient is a, a conversation that needs to be had between the patient and their physician and depends on many, many things. The characteristics of the patient, the type of PAH they have, how severe their disease is, side effects, and that sort of thing. So it's hard to make a blanket recommendation. I will say that the results of the Serafin trial are very impressive demonstrating that Massitentin improved long-term morbidity mortality type outcomes. Um, as a, a very effective endothelin receptor antagonist, as an oral agent, I think it, it will be appropriate for many PAH patients who have functional class two or early three um, symptoms. And again, that's a conversation that should be had between the patient and their physician. And again, based on the data, she described which patient types are not appropriate for therapy. 
Well, Steve, again, a very individualized decision. I think that very ill patients, patients with very advanced symptoms, functional class four, or late three symptoms, patients with advanced right heart failure are patients that need to go on to parenteral prostanoids. And so those are patients who maybe a, a more aggressive therapy should be considered uh, up front. I asked Dr. McLaughlin why Massey-Tenton is unique and what are potential hypotheses for this. So Steve, a Massey-Tenton is really a designer ERA. The developers of Massey-Tenton uh, took the good things that we have from other ERAs and tried to improve upon them to reduce some of the side effects. So it has a very good side effect profile, a very low LFT abnormality profile, a very low edema profile. So I think of it as an ERA that has the, the benefits and maybe even expanded benefits upon the ERAs that are currently available with reduced side effects. So I do think it's unique. And finally, were there any unsuspected findings from the data or new learning? Steve, I, I think the data is very impressive. I think the most important new learning is the whole concept of obtaining longer term morbidity mortality type outcomes as we've uh, discussed. I think the side effect profile was very good, particularly with respect to lower extremity edema and LFT abnormalities. There was a little signal at the higher doses of a low hemoglobin and this needs to be further investigated. That was Dr. Valerie McLaughlin from the University of Michigan. Thank you to all the experts who contributed to this edition of Perspectives on PH. We look forward to seeing you here at PAH-TV as we cover the latest news in pulmonary hypertension.